739 News at 11. Weekend edition. Coverage you can count on. Flames racing across the North County tonight. One of the most devastating wildfires to hit San Diego in years is burning out of control. High winds on top of the drought adding up to disaster. More than a dozen homes are laid to waste. Many more people fear theirs may be next. Firefighters working into the night, though they are nowhere close to getting this wildfire under control. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Susan Taylor. Suzanne Rico is on assignment in Salt Lake City. And I'm Vic Salazar. This fire is burning around the small North County town of Fallbrook near the border with Riverside County. We have team coverage tonight. Artie Ojeda has the latest on the firefight. Carter Evans has talked with people who lost their homes. Let's start with Artie. Vic, sadly, we are standing in front of one of at least 16 houses that have been destroyed in this fire. Right now, the winds have died down significantly, but there are enough hot spots out there right now that if those winds were to kick up again, it could once again spell disaster. This is one of at least 25 hot spots still burning in Fallbrook. So far, 2,000 acres have burned in a nasty wind-driven fire that has destroyed at least 16 homes. Two fire engines and one sheriff's vehicle also destroyed. The fire, one mile wide, two and a half miles long to the east, burning onto Camp Pendleton. Wherever the wind's pushing it, that's where the fire's going to go tonight. Uh, we, all the men that, and women who are currently on the fire scene will stay there tonight. The fire started in the Santa Margarita Riverbed just after 11 a.m. In the 25 years that I've worked here, that area has never burnt. You've got 10 to 15 foot tall brush. Uh, it's going to burn where it wants to burn. The fire here is generating its own wind source and it's blowing it to the north to this area, which is completely dry brush and it's going to go up in a matter of minutes. 600 people are on the fire lines. By morning, 16 hand crews and six bulldozers will be brought in to work tough to reach canyon ridges. Our main thing right now is access into the, to the canyons and finding some uh, good locations to put firefighters that are safe. And for residents living near the fire lines, it will undoubtedly be a sleepless night. Well, I'm going to be up all night just making sure that, uh, that if it does, if the wind dies down, if it continues this way, then it's an evacuation. But as long as the wind stays the way it is, uh, I don't believe I have anything to worry about. There's still no official cause uh, for this fire, but I was talking to a couple of the locals, and they tell me that it is not unusual for residents to have their own controlled burns this time of the year. That apparently was happening this weekend. Many people just not anticipating these tremendous winds that we had. Reporting live from Fallbrook, I'm Artie Ojeda. Vic, back to you. Artie, thanks for that update. Firefighters from 50 different agencies have moved in to fight this fire. As Artie just reported, 650 firefighters on the front lines. The flames have cut through three fire jurisdictions, including Camp Pendleton. Three choppers took part in the assault from the air. Even with all those resources, they just couldn't keep up with a fire like this. And tonight, more than a dozen families have lost their homes. Carter Evans joins us now live with their story. Carter? Well, the goal was to avoid something like this. This is actually, or was a home early this morning. You can see this is the washroom right here, the washer and dryer. Residents and firefighters working desperately today to avoid this. But as you can see, it was a very difficult task. Pretty much trash. The fire's out now, so Alberta Parker and her husband are sifting through what's left of their Fallbrook home. I'm glad we got up here to see what was here. Not much. At least 15 homes burned in this fire, many very expensive, 500000 to a million dollars. The flames were moving so fast, firefighters were having a difficult time keeping up. But what we're trying to stop is from this dead grove spreading up and going down this main road over here. The fire's coming up this hill very quickly right here. You can see it moving. There is a house off that way. Everybody is evacuating. We've got to leave right now. Let's get those cars out. Coming up. It's unbelievable how fast it was going. So I came down and told my wife and kids to get out. Dennis Recker managed to save his home. At one point, though, he was completely surrounded by fire. I've got a swimming pool in my backyard. I kept thinking if it gets real bad, I'll just go jump in the swimming pool. And Luckily, he didn't have to do that, and he's also lucky to have his home now because many others do not. 
you got to keep a perspective. Yes, I know I'm going to cry many a tear. But right now, what's the point? You heard Dennis Recker talking there about jumping into a swimming pool, and you might think that's absolutely unbelievable, but it's true. Six people today had to jump into their swimming pools to escape this fire. They are suffering from hypothermia tonight in the hospital, although they are expected to be okay. sdg &E is also out here. They are working very hard tonight because the only f light out here tonight is uh, fire light, and the firefighters will be here for uh, quite some time. They're working all night tonight trying to take care of this, trying to make sure no more homes get burned down. Live in Fallbrook, I'm Carter Evans. Stacy, back to you. Oh, thanks, Carter, very much. It's Susan. Uh, Stacy had to go home because she lost her voice. Almost as quickly as the fire started, evacuation centers were set up in Fallbrook. More than 200 homes were evacuated and residents were sent to Fallbrook Union High School. That's where the Red Cross is providing food and shelter to those who may have lost everything. We were at the evacuation uh, earlier today and we talked to some of those people. Done, but I literally ran and fell with my cat in her cage and it tumbled down the hill. Exactly. I mean, I, I was going to see if I have had a heart attack if the paramedics show up anytime soon. Well, you're but remarkably well proposed, I think, for having been through this. Uh, not inside. People aren't the only refugees from the fire. Dozens of scared and confused animals were also found roaming the streets of Fallbrook. Many people lost pets, like these uh, two dogs. Uh, they were taken to an animal evacuation center on South Stagecoach Lane. Team of volunteers uh, also began looking through nearby canyons for any signs of missing pets. Despite everything else going on, the safety of the animals, the first thing on the minds of many pet owners. I've talked to three people here today so far in the last hour that uh, came in very concerned about could we help them find their animals. All three of them said what I'm wearing and what I'm driving is all I've got left. Their houses are gone and they're looking for their dogs. Here's where you can find the evacuation centers. The Red Cross has set up a center at Fallbrook High School. That address is 2400 South Stagecoach Lane. There's a secondary center at the Fallbrook Boys and Girls Club. The address there, 455 East Ivy Street. And an animal evacuation center is at 1621 South Stagecoach Lane. Bone dry, wind warnings. It makes perfect fit conditions for this type of fire. Pat Brown, the question is how soon are we going to see a change in the weather, which we help these firefighters? Well, Susan, the good news is the Santa Ana winds that have been causing the con these conditions will continue to decrease overnight as the high pressure, that's really the reason for them, continues to weaken. Now, earlier we were under a high wind warning. We were seeing gusts up to 60 miles per hour, but now that has been downgraded into a high wind advisory. So now the east winds should only go up to about 40 miles per hour, but they could could gust up to 50 miles per hour, so it's still going to be windy, especially below the canyons and the passes. They act as kind of a, a wind tunnel. Travel can also be hazardous for high profile vehicles, but we don't see any real relief in sight until midweek when some clouds come in and the temperatures fall. I'll have your complete forecast coming up. All right. Thank you, Pat. Here's where we stand with the fire tonight. So far, the flames have charred more than 2,000 acres. 16 homes have been either damaged or destroyed. At least 11 people have been treated for minor injuries, such as smoke inhalation. As many as 100 people have been displaced by the fire. The fire is 5% contained tonight. We will bring you updates throughout this newscast and have the very latest for you on NBC 739 News this morning, starting at 5 a.m. Well, there are other stories in the news tonight.